just uh, set up once again. We'll go through the reading of the Word of God. And this um, service, I would like to just speak to you on something. It's familiar, but it's good to have a reminder and to start up this year. How many of you, you like to do uh, your New Year resolution? Now, although it's not necessary, right? I mean, some of you kind of do. How many of you do New Year resolutions? Or you did like a New Year resolution? None of you actually do it. Okay, good. <laughs> but uh, there are people, and maybe you're kind of shy, right? But there are people that, you know, uh, December comes, you kind of take out your little notebook, you write down maybe, oh, this year I would like to run 30 kilometers every single week. I do that <laughs> at one point in my life, right? <laughs> but but uh, I need to put that in the resolution, right? But today, what I would like to speak on is unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. Amen? Yes, that's uh, an extra effect on that. <laughs> but Unwavering faith, I want to connect to a story that is very familiar to all of us, right? The Bible talks about faith like a mustard seed. And this morning, we went through the Bible study with uh, 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 Diana Chun Wai to talk about elevated faith. God wants to build each and every one of us and have us go through some of life experience. But also those experience will give us elevated faith. Amen. And the Bible says that with great faith, you're able to move mountains. How many of you would like to move mountains this morning? Amen. Elevate the faith that could move mountains. Now, the Bible tells us a story of, how many of you heard of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? The three Hebrew children that were, or, or youth, right, who were captured and were essentially, the Bible says enslaved, but I believe that God actually gave them favor with Nebuchadnezzar. And it is to bring God glory. Let's kind of go to Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. It tells us, uh, as we read through, it's, it's quite a lengthy, um, uh, not really lengthy, but there's a few uh scriptures that I would like to go over. And it tells us a story of how God used Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I know that a lot of sermons kind of touch upon how, you know, God uh, was with them through the furnace. But also, what I would like to highlight this morning is what happened after the unbearing faith, right? So, um, if you go through your Bible, let's read from Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. And I, I just thank God that, you know, uh, to, to my this morning expressed that he would like to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And I think it connects to what we talked about. Yeah, let's rejoice that to my God is continue to, to develop you and to grow you. And hopefully in terms of your faith, God will increase your faith, your understanding in his word. Amen. And it, chapter Daniel chapter 3, verse 1, it tells us that King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other province, uh, provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations and people of every language. This is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. But so uh, what, whoever does not fall down and worship 
will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So it tells us that King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, this is you know, civilization 101, right? We knew, we knew that, uh, you know, back then, King Nebuchadnezzar, he had a kingdom that is, you know, he gathered the, the top officials gathered together to worship this idol that we, we built, right? So, and what happened was that he reprimanded every single individuals in the kingdom to bow down to this idol. And let's kind of drop down, you know, we, we, we see that uh, there were three Hebrew captive youth that were placed in that government that God, you know, had a plan that they go through this incident to bring him glory, right? So uh, let's kind of drop down to um, uh, uh, verse 8. So what happened was there were a group of uh, these uh, 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 astrologers, right? Or, or what, what astrologers that, you know, kind of told King that, you know what, you... Did, did, King, did you know that there are like three Hebrew children that are youth that they refuse to bow down to this idol, right? So this, in verse eight, uh, 13, it tells us that furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up. Now, when you hear the sound of a horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will de deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Amen. Lord Jesus, I just pray this morning, oh God, everyone gathered here this morning, Lord, that you anoint your word to be spoken out, God Jesus, that Lord, let it, Lord Jesus, minister to each and every one, and Lord, let your glory fall in this place, oh God Jesus. Let those who have ear to hear, oh God Jesus, let your word so seats in our hearts, oh God. And Lord, I just pray that you will touch each and every one. And Lord Jesus, help us to have elevated faith this morning, oh God, that Lord, these words will touch lives. And Lord Jesus, it will transform, oh God, people, oh God, Jesus, that Lord, we will bring you glory as this word, oh God, uh, continue to rejuvenate us, oh God, to remind us, oh God, of your goodness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. You may be seated. Um, so what happened here was, King Nebuchadnezzar, he basically knew that there were three uh, Hebrew captive youth. And we know that Daniel was part of the group. But here, it specifically tells us that Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego, they knew from young that they've been taught you know, hear, O Israel, our Lord is one, right? And we shall worship uh, the Lord our God. And here was an incident that shows us that they have been captive uh, in this land, the foreign land, perhaps uh, was not familiar to them, right? Maybe was the food uh, a little different, right? Uh, how many of you, you can survive without rice for a year? <laughs> I, I mean, for, for those, I think everyone eats rice here, right? How many of you can survive without rice for a year? I, I've done it for like one month. I just survive on potatoes, right? So, But you can imagine 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being captured and not just being captured, but I, I believe that, you know, some of them is, they, they mentioned how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were enslaved. But I think the situation was, was a little different. Now, this was one of those events that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar gathered the top officials. I, I believe Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was part of this group. They were what we did today. If uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are here, they, they are considered in terms of they are very influential enslaved individuals, right? And what happened was the king summoned all these top officials that I have the ceremony and I want you to bow down to this, you know, crafted image. It's something that is not familiar to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In fact, their names, their identity, those were not their names, right? We know that in the Bible, it tells us that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are sort of like identity that was input by uh, 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 King Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom, right? So the enslaved. And we know that their Hebrew names were uh, 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 Hananiah, Mishai, and Azariah. And what it means was th these names, you know, identity, it's powerful. Identity is a very powerful thing. You know, we go to uh, uh, any places or uh, even in Malaysia, it's multicultural. People feel proud of their identity. And it is something that is very significant. And with the names, uh, I know some culture, some cultures, they, they take name very seriously, right? So you give name to an individual, a baby that is born, it, it means something. It's an identity. And here, the Hebrew meaning of Shad, uh, of uh, of Hananiah, which Shadrach, in you know the the, the heathen, they gave him the identity, they forced it to to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But here, Hananiah it means God is gracious, right? Mishael it means who is like God, right? And Azariah. It means God has help. It, you know, powerful meaning, right? But if you look at uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it mentions that in, in the Bible. The reason why the Bible didn't use the Hebrew name is, again, it's to express the suffering, express in terms of how they went through these trial and tribulation. And this was sort of part of the God has protected them through this time. Amen? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were captive from their homeland to serve in the Babylonian Empire. Now, we know that from history, the Babylonian Empire is probably one of those early civilizations. You know, to, for King Nebuchadnezzar to, to use, not, not just captive, but to use these Hebrew Jews in his court, it speaks volumes. And what happened here? We, we kind of see that you know there, there were there were these astrologers that were you know against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know these astrologers in chapter eight. It tells us that the astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, "May the king live forever." Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that those who does not fall down and worship will be thrown in the blazing fire or blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you. So, Again, there were people that were against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Sometimes in our life, we, we do have people that are against us because of our beliefs. How many of you, uh, I, I know in my experience, uh, uh, in, in my workplace, in my school, in, before, I, I've been, you know, uh, 
perhaps people might think you the way you you talk is a little different. Amen. How many of you experienced that before? Maybe it's it's the way you present yourself, right? Um, and uh, maybe it's uh, you know the way you you talk to other people. And and there are people that will, you know, find fault and to perhaps speak badly about you. As how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego here, you know, God sometimes bad things that happen, God meant it for good. And God will use situations to use it for good, to bring these three uh, Hebrew children to bring glory to him. Amen? So here we, we know that uh, it shows us here that the empire, God actually delivered the three Hebrew children out of the furnace. You know, in a situation where it seems hopeless, where they obey God, and here, I think it's a little bit uh, too much of the uh, delay. The Solomon can lower down the feedback. Thank you. Um, so here, we know that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was so furious that he actually asked the three uh, Hebrew children to put them in the furnace, the fire furnace, right? Because they refused to bow before the golden image. You see, when we are baptized in the name of Jesus, we put on the identity of Christ. Amen? We put on the identity of identity of Christ, the environment that tries to change our identity, we have the Holy Ghost to overcome these uh, situations that try to change our identity in Him. Amen? And, you know, God, sometimes in tough situations, God uses situations to strengthen your faith in Him. It, it is in these situations that you will realize that you know, God is real and he is with you. You might not realize that God is with you. You know, we, it, just like the three Hebrew children, they were in the furnace, yet they didn't, they know that God will be with them, but they didn't even realize that there is the fourth person in the furnace, right? So King Nebuchadnezzar even increased the heat seven times, right? Uh, to the point where the guards were bringing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were, uh, the, the, the heat was so great that the guards even, they, they were burned alive, right? But yet, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were put in the furnace, the fire, they were just, they were A-okay, right? <laughs> and, uh, and in fact, King Nebuchadnezzar, he saw, no, Shadow, Meshach, and Abednego, you need to understand, they didn't say, oh, King, that there's a, the fourth person with us. They didn't even realize that Jesus was with them all this while. Amen? Amen? And the people that saw Shadow, Meshach, and Abednego, the king, he observed, he realized that there is a greater power that was with these three Hebrew children. Amen? And in fact, he mentioned that, you know, get this three Hebrew children out, right? It became a testimony to the people that would bring persecution to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen? So we, we are now living in the, in, the, in the time where our faithfulness is constantly be te being tested. Amen? Uh, I know that, you know, especially for young people nowadays, it's, it's not, I mean, we had this conversation with my sister and, and some, you know, individuals. Uh, we kind of talk about how things were different back then, right? During our parents' time, and things are a little different, just a little, right? Uh, in um, 2022, right? Uh, we just talked about the traffic the other day. Uh, 
back in what the uh, 20, 30 years ago, right? Traffic wasn't that bad, right? It didn't feel like traffic was really bad <laughs> uh, here uh, during rush hours. And so we, we know that the situation uh, is, is different. The, the circumstances that were faced by Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were different during their time, right? Uh, now, based on what I read, I would imagine Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is more less on the persecution than on how the environment, right, the advancement of Babylon that actually distracted, will, will try to distract them from serving Jesus. You need to understand in Back in Babylon, it was advanced. It's during that time, that era, Babylon was advanced. It's sort of like New York City or any of these, you know, London or wherever. You know, things were just advanced. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, we know that the Hebrew children, they were being captured to enslaved, but in a way that they were part of these officials that Nebuchadnezzar has included them. And Daniel... Of course, Daniel was one of them. And here we understand that the pressure of life, it, it sometimes will be turned up just like how, you know, in situations where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were put in a situation that they were pressured. They were pressured to listen to these different voices or being persecuted in the way, right? Uh, so here we know that in Romans chapter 5, it tells us that God... God allows trials and difficulties, tribulations in our lives to build our character. Just as how these uh, uh, Hebrew youths they went through, right? To strengthen our faith and for other reasons that we might not know, but God knows. And here today, this morning, I just want to let you know that, you know, in spite of your circumstances, Jesus, he is with you. And you might not realize that, you know, Jesus is with you in the office. He's trying to, you know, some situations that you go through. It might be a situation that God is trying to use you to be an encourager to the people around you, to be that witness, right? It might be in your school. It might be in your college. But with every situation, it might seem dire. But God is trying to use you to, to to send a signal to the people around you, to show that he is with you and he is using you as a testimony to bring him glory. Amen? Amen. Now, though God's miraculous deliverance of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that day, Nebuchadnezzar declared that the remaining uh, uh, Hebrew children, right, that are being captive in the land, because of this miracle, the rest of the Hebrew children, they, they were, the youth, they were able to declare or publicly worship the Almighty God, right? And it's because of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they received favor from King Nebuchadnezzar. Amen? Now, in our lives, sometimes situations happen, but God is with us. And it, He is using these situations to open up doors not just for you, but for the people around you, for your family, for, for your community. And it, it is these situations that will strengthen your faith to give you to walk through these test of times so that your faith will not be wavered. Amen? Amen? Now, we kind of hear the statement before. No, rough seas actually, it, it makes good sailors. Amen? And we, we can see in times where you be tested and tried. You know, the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus he himself, you know, after days of fasting, days of praying, the devil even came to tempt Jesus. Right? We, we know that in, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, Right, Jesus, he was led by the Spirit to go to the wilderness. And even there, the devil tried to tempt God, right? Uh, the first incident is like, Jesus, turn the bread and the stone, right? 
So all these things, it, it, is, it is the material things that the devil is trying to draw you away, the temptations of this world, right? But why not, you know, turn the stones into bread, right? Uh, perhaps, you know, you can work extra hours and, and uh, you know, make a little bit more money, right? Can you just tone, turn the stones into bread, right? You, you got you got the knowledge in it. You graduate from uh, this certain, you got a college degree, right? Well, why can't you just, you know, make a little bit more money, right? Well, forget about Sunday, right? Well, what about Sunday? Sunday, you can make an extra day of cash, right? So, and, and also, this, you know, second time, it's sort of a troll. That will tell Jesus, throw yourself down, and, you know, you can command the angels to deliver you. You know, there are situations where in life, sometimes, you know, God actually told the devil, do not tempt. Do not tempt God, right? Now, in some situations, uh, when we go through, we, we always think that, you know, okay, God, I know you're going to bring me through the situation. God will bring you through the situation. But again, you know, you need to understand that God has a will for you, and it is important for you to follow His will and to follow His will. And His will in His way is so that, you know, people can see your testimony and come to the understanding, to, to see His greatness in your life. Amen? And here again, the last part here, God was tempted. You know, Satan told him that, you can worship me after all these things. I present you all these things, and you can just you know, worship me instead. But here, Jesus told him that as part of the commandment, we shall worship one God, right? And, and, and to obey, the, again, that we are followers of Christ. Amen? You know, sometimes in situations where we might think that, oh, um, you know, I'm going to a trial and in tribulations, uh, God might not be with me. But here I'm here to remind you that just as how Jesus was tempted, right? He overcame these trials and tribulation. He was tempted, yet he overcame. And I'm uh, uh, telling you this morning that Jesus is with you. He is able to help you overcome these challenges that you go through. Just as how the three Hebrew youth, they believed that God could deliver them, but they would still trust him. Even they knew that whatever happens in the furnace, we would perhaps, maybe we, we might die in the furnace, right? But yet they stood steadfast on their faith because they knew God is going to bring them through these trial times. And not just deliver them, but God is going to use them as the mouthpiece, right, to set his people free from restriction of worshiping him, right? I mean, even know that uh, the Bible tells us Daniel, Daniel preached, you know, three times a day that it caused frustration to the, to the folks that tried to bring harm to him. And we know that he was put in the, the lion's uh, den, right? And God, again, protected Daniel through these times. Amen. And here it tells us that in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold fast to the confession of the hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. Our deliverance has been accomplished on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he told each and every one of us that your sin has been remitted. Amen. And you've been delivered and it is now that you put on the new identity, amen? And not, you might not understand in terms of the future, what the future holds, but I'm telling you here that Jesus understands and he's able to bring you through as how he has brought the three Hebrew children through the trials and tribulations, amen? If you worship Jesus this morning, if you believe in every trials and tribulation that God is going to bring you through, just give him praise. In spite of his circumstances, we give God glory and praise. I know of this, uh, there's a time where when I was in uh, um, college and, uh, you know, every semester towards the end, this was like my first semester, right? 
towards the end of the semester, uh, they usually have the class in either in the bar or, yeah, I, I know, right? <laughs> uh, probably kind of foreign to you, but, but, you know, this is in New York and was going to school my first semester towards the end. My, uh, my professor actually told, I mean, his class was like small, it was like 12 students, right? Uh, my professor uh, told the, oh, the last day of class, why don't we, we, we have our class in the bar? Uh, and uh, I was like, oh, okay, that's, uh, that's a little unconventional. And then they kind of move, oh, you know what, Let, let's, why not let's just have it in, if I told them like, well, maybe you can have it in other places, like part of the cushion, right? But they mentioned that, oh, okay, let's have it in uh, uh, one of the classmates' uh, uh, place and uh, is, is gonna, we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring alcohol, we're gonna bring beer, right? Uh, to, to the class, right? So, uh, and I remember very clearly that uh, that, that day, I went, I just told them, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm a Christian, I don't partake in these, you know, I, I don't, uh, this, you know, uh, oranges will be good, right? Uh, and this incident happened, and I, well, I didn't really put it much thought into it, but I remember two years later, uh, one of my classmates who was in uh, during, you know, the, that's the, 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 the meeting, uh, she actually observed every single thing, right? Every, and I didn't say a word or anything. I just say, give me orange juice and I'll be good with it. And they know, you know, because I'm a Christian, I don't partake in these things. And uh, well, the long story short is this friend of mine, two years later, you know, one day she just came to me and was like, Kenneth, uh, can you pray for me? I've got a situation that I'm going through. Uh, and I told her, oh, okay. Uh, well, how do you know, like, uh, I'm a Christian? And, and she told me, she was like, you know, you remember that day, the last semester, uh, during the time where, we, you know, uh, I saw that there, there are a few other, there are a few other, you know, individuals that partake. But I, I noticed you actually, you know, you stand firm in your faith, right? And I can see that you actually, you're different from the rest of, you know, individuals perhaps that proclaim they're Christians, but I know that's something different about you. And I know I can bring this situation where your prayer will make a difference. Amen. So that was a time it kind of told, told me that, you know, in spite of these situations that might makes us comfortable. Sometimes, you know, situations makes us feel uncomfortable, but we always need to remember that, you know, in spite of these circumstances that God put us through, it is for a greater reason, right? God wants to use you to be that witness. God wants to use you to be that mouthpiece. And it is up to you to, you know, to think of it, whether it's, you know, a trial and tribulation that you go through, or you will come out stronger. God is able to use you as the testimony to bring him glory. Amen. Just as how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego you know, after this whole incident, they came out stronger and they brought God's favor to the rest of the Hebrew children. Amen. Is this what you want this morning? That God is able to use you to not just influence the people around you, but also to bring forth uh, uh, God's blessing, bring forth God's protection into not just your family, but also your community. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And here we, we see that Nebuchadnezzar, uh, later on, we see that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, right? He was so troubled with a dream that, you know, he asked for the Hebrew, uh, uh, he asked for Daniel, one of the Hebrew youth, to help him understand the dreams. And here again, you know, Nebuchadnezzar see all these things that the Hebrew children he knew that they pray a few times a day. They knew that they were different in the way, you know, uh, they, 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 they perform themselves. And, 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 you know, the food that they eat is different. The way they speak is different. Amen. And here we see that uh, uh, God is trying to use this, these Hebrew children to bring him glory. Amen. And, and 
we know that here in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it tells us, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen. How many of you want to know the will of God in your life this morning? Amen. Amen. I know every one of us, we have a desire to see God's manifestation, power leading us through this year. Now, you might not think, oh, I don't have any resolution for this year, right? But I know God has a resolution for you this year. Amen. He wants to use you this year to, to, to be an impact to your community. You know, no doubt some, some, sometimes uh, things might happen. You know, you might go through a tough time in the office, right? Your bosses, they might not understand why you, you know, uh, fast. I know the other day, I, I was, uh, you know, that day I was fasting and uh, I've got, I've got uh, colleagues that came to me. They were like, Kenneth, let's go for lunch. And I, I just went like, uh, oh, today I'm, I'm not, you know, uh, taking lunch and I, and one of them actually I didn't even say anything you just say cat is fasting today right the cat is fasting today I'm like okay yeah I'm fasting today so you, you know sometimes things that happen you might not realize that people around you they're observing your life they're observing you in in your college right the way you speak the way you perform yourself right and people they know that God's manifestation power is in your life. They see a difference in your life. Amen. Amen. And for this year, I just encourage you this year, as you go through your daily life, let God be the center of it all. Amen. And allow God to use you at the, as that mouthpiece. Maybe it's to your boss that you work for. Maybe they, they, they might kind of, you know, give you a hard time. But they understand, they see your testimony. They realize that you serve an almighty God. Maybe is the teachers at the school, right? The, the, the professors at the college. But I want to just tell you that your peers, your teachers, your professors in college, your boss, your neighbors, they see you because they know that God, his manifestation power is in your life. And here, the key is to be steadfast in your faith. Be not waver. Just as how the psalmist say, you are being planted by the rivers of water. And you are being developed, continue to grow in Christ, continue to open your understanding in him. Amen. And, and, and to be stand firm in your beliefs, knowing that God has a plan for your life. In spite of the situation, we know that God is with you. You might not realize it. You are in the fire furnace. Yes, perhaps things are a little tough right now, right? Perhaps you're saying the economy, they predict that this year is going to be this way, right? Maybe I applied for something and I didn't get it. Or uh, maybe uh, I'm just going through a rough time, uh, uh, feeling a little depressed. But I just want to tell you that when you walk through the furnace, you're not alone. Amen. Jesus is with you every step of the way. Maybe it's, you know, a sickness that you're, you're enduring, you're, you're recovering from some uh, illnesses. And I just want to tell you that God is with you. Although you're in the furnace, you might not realize, but Jesus is with you all the way. And he's going to make the situation better, not just because he wants to heal you, although that's part of the plan, but more than just healing you, more than just protecting you, more than just bring you through the situation, God wants to do something greater. He wants to use you to impact your community. He wants to use you to speak those words that will influence your boss, that will influence your, your, your teachers, your, your college professors. Amen? Now, sometimes we might think that, you know, if I'm Shadrach, Meshach, and Manigal, I'm this young, captive, 
a, a Hebrew child, right, or youth, I might think that I'm powerless, right? I'm in a foreign land that nothing is familiar to me, right? And uh, I'm young. I might, you know, that there are all these officials that uh, under, you know, these pressure, I, I'm, they, they're trying to break me, right? You know, sometimes you feel that way, right? And maybe in your workplace or whatever, you, you feel that, you know, the culture is trying to break you. But I just want to tell you that Jesus is with you. And while you are going through these hard times, it's always a reminder that he wants to turn the situation around. And it is for his glory. Amen. You might not think of the outcome. You might think, uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out this situation. I'm not sure I'm going to get out of this depression. But I just want to tell you this morning that God is with you. And all you need to do is to stand fast, step fast in your faith. And to proclaim that in every situation, Lord, you are in control of the situation. Jesus, I know that you are bringing me through. You're ordering my steps. And you are bringing me through for a greater purpose. Amen. Amen. If this is your prayer this morning, if this message it speaks to you in your current situation, I, I just want to encourage you to lift up your hands this morning. You know, perhaps it's a new year. It, it, it's your prayer for God to renew your mind. Because here it tells us that through the transformation of the, of the by the renewal of your mind, that these tests, these trials, God is trying to use you in these situations. Now I know it's it's the new year. You might have you know you might not know how this year is going to turn out, but I want to promise you that God knows every situation. God knows your worries. And God has promised that he's going to bring you through. I recently asked a, a young person, we, we had a conversation, and I, I, I asked uh, this friend of mine, I was like, what, 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 have you, what, what do you have in plan for this year? And the, all he told me was sad. He, was to, he told me that, you know, uh, I, I don't, I, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to survive this year. That, that is a very scary statement, Right? And this morning, I just want to encourage you to lift up your hands. If this is, you're in the same situation, maybe, again, you, you might, you worried about some situation in your life. I might not understand, but I know that God, he understands and he's able. As we kind of conclude, I just want you to raise your hands. Uh, I know sometimes you don't even know you have a situation and you don't know how to express it. I just want you to raise your hand this morning and allow God to do a work in your life this morning. You know, as how God brought the three Hebrew children through the fire furnace. And those situations actually lead to greater things, right? We know that King Nebuchadnezzar at the end appointed these three Hebrew children along with Daniel, to be his assistant, to be great individuals in Babylon. Mm -hmm.